Aloha, and welcome to our first episode of Nonprofits Mean Business, where we will delve into services provided in our community by nonprofit organizations. I'm your host, Krista Stadler, joined by my co host and co creator, Brandon Keenan. We will be joining you every other Thursday at noon and are very excited about this opportunity. Aloha, Brandon. Aloha, Krista. How are you today? <laughs> I'm fabulous. I would love it if you will share with our audience how the show came about. Oh, of course. Well, I happen to be very passionate about contributing to the community in the form of volunteering time to nonprofits that are near and dear to my heart. And as it turns out, when I brought that conversation point up, uh, Krista feels the same way. And she also uh, very passionate about giving back to the community and has a history of doing so as well. Uh, you get that sense of uh, synergy that came about and we got very excited about the concept. Uh, so much so that we thought, hey, we, this could be a very good show. We, there are thousands of nonprofits in the state of Hawaii and all of them are contributing, giving back to the community in various ways. And they might like an opportunity uh, to get their message out in a different way that might bring different uh, resources as well as volunteers for their uh, various efforts that they're making on behalf uh, of their nonprofit. So we pitched it to Jay, who is the founder we of did, Big Tech and Hawaii. Go ahead. Which just so happens to be a nonprofit as well. Yes. Uh, so uh, he, uh, Jay is, is, Fidel is the founder of Think Tech, and just through his efforts uh, by providing this uh, outlet, if you will, to the community uh, is obviously contributing to the, the community in his own way as well. And I think getting the word out is just another form of publicity, and it allows uh, those nonprofits to have another voice. Yes, absolutely. Well, we definitely want to um, encourage various leaders in the nonprofit world to come in and, and talk to us about their nonprofit events coming up and whatnot. But we also, as the title says, want to get into the business of, you know, the nonprofits mean business and how they're operated. How do you establish a nonprofit? Um, you know, what type of resources are there out there and grants and whatnot? And I have a couple of topics today. We're just really wanting to kind of give a broad picture to what the show is going to look like and where we're going. Of course, that may change as we go along. But Right now, um, we have some things that we really wanted to touch on, and Brandon, I'm going to ask you, one of the things we had discussed when we were just formulating all of this is, what do nonprofits, what can nonprofits do better than government? What flexibility a, do they uh, have? Yeah, that's a great question. So when you talk about um, putting resources into the community, when the government gets involved, as we all know, there's a lot of a lot of red tape, a lot of loopholes, a lot of things that have to be done in order for them to deliver on that service, whereas a nonprofit doesn't have to go through all that. They, they have a passion, they develop an administration, they say, hey, we want to find a way to give this service to the community, and then they establish a nonprofit, which allows, of course, them to uh, take resources in from various contributors and uh, in return for that uh, co contribution, which ultimately ends up as a service to the community, uh, they get a tax advantage for that. And uh, they, they have sums of money that they, they would like to direct into the communities and they're looking for ways to do it. And they want to give back, but they don't necessarily have the passion to give back in a particular manner, but they have the resources. So they're looking for outlets and um, and that's the, the, the relationship between the nonprofit and, and the community. And the, and the government, the community government. And the, yeah, yeah. Yes, of course. Yes. And also, um, you're talking about foundations that may, may feel the same way. Um, it would be great if we could get, you know, have a guest that was representing a foundation that, that was contributing to nonprofit charitable organizations. Um, and they That's may be correct. in the same boat. They don't have the operational resources, but they want to, to make an impact. Correct. I mean, they don't want to necessarily establish an entire organization around, like to say, delivering a music program to, to a neighborhood or, or a community where they like 
maybe the school doesn't offer music programs anymore. And we all know how important music and arts are to the development of our keiki. So when the nonprofit can fill that void and they can come in and they bring in various uh, people that want to volunteer their time, uh, next thing you know, there's a music program set up in that community and, and, the, and the community is benefiting from that. There's a lot of uh, foundations that want their resources directed very specifically uh, into the community. And when they bring those resources together with a nonprofit, then it ends up being a very good relationship. There's a level of accountability. They want to see something done. But as long as they're providing those services and it's uh, in favor of the type of work that the foundation would like to see done in the community, then it uh, becomes a very good relationship. You were telling me before the show about an opportunity. I'm so sorry, I can't remember exactly what it was. Some kind of redevelopment program that they're looking for nonprofits to participate in. Um, oh, are you talking about the about Haiku that? Stairway? Yes. 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 So ironically, this is a very uh, contemporary subject matter. It was on the news this morning, as a matter of fact. The city and uh, the city actually is interviewing nonprofits and businesses uh, to come up with a plan to do something with the haiku stairway, which we all know as the stairway to heaven. It's, uh, it's a resource that I don't think people really want to see go away. At the same time, uh, the water, um, or is it the water company or whatever, they, they own the land that it sits on. Mm. And so they're not necessarily excited to spend all that money to, to fix it. But because of what it means to our communities, and we mm -hmm. want that in our community, uh, they reached out to nonprofits. And so I think that's uh, a clever way uh, to utilize that relationship with nonprofits and businesses to, to, to do something for our community without having to worry about all the red tape of going through government. That really brings up a good point because you're, you're talking about businesses as well. And I know there's foundations and then there's government funding for different things, but there are quite a few businesses. I know the business that I work for, um, we have a group called um, Vision of Aloha and we, we, we actually calendar out different organizations that uh, the group of us, and of course we invite everyone in the whole company, but there's a, a base of us that go out and make these contributions. But even with, even with the um, organization that you're supporting, um, you go out to businesses and ask for donations for beverages and, and food at events and things like that. So it's really kind of interesting how there's the nonprofit, the community, the volunteers, the, the government, and then private businesses all working together to make things happen. I, I just love that. That's so great. It, 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 you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an opportunity to find out who there is in your community that, that want to give back. It, it's talking about directing resources. So yeah, in, a, in this scenario, it's a community cleanup effort. And so we're, we need water for the volunteers. We need food for the volunteers. We need, you know, materials for them to provide the cleanup effort. And uh, so, yeah, you're coordinating a lot of different efforts within the community. You're involved in the entire community at that point, uh, including the public officials in some respects. So they want, they, they like to know that what's going on in their communities. And they uh, get excited, if you will, to find out that there's somebody that's passionate about doing something in their community, and they also uh, would like to, to participate in those things. No, it's, it's great, which does help sometimes bring publicity to the event, which is also beneficial because it, it helps to promote it, which is awesome. It, um, yeah. Go ahead. go ahead. Oh, so... Yeah, there are, there's a various amount of resources available in the community. Some of those are available uh, from state and also um, county resources in the form of grants. And, and naturally, there is an application process and there is accountability measures that need to be put in place to make sure that those resources are utilized in the community in the, which, the means of which they had intended. And that's just one specific example. So... Uh, we talked about a business, and so a nonprofit is has to formulate a, a type of a business structure. So they have to have business acumen would be very beneficial. You need to have somebody that understands numbers. You need somebody that knows how to bring the community together and, and handle the administrative uh, elements of that. There's also taxes that are, need to be filed. There 
there's a number of different things. So it's like a little, a little board of directors and a little, it's a business in a sense. And mm -hmm. you're just running it in a manner that uh, serves the community. Sure, instead marketing of and print materials, marketing. labor management. I mean, you could just go on and on and on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, true story. Yeah. You know, I was just kind of doing some investigating for the show, and it is so amazing how many different types of nonprofit organizations we have here in in Hawaii on this particular island and the state as well. But on the, I mean, just from a product standpoint, you know, some of them focus on providing obviously food. That's a huge one, whether it's prepared food or, um, you know, non-prepared food, pantry type items, diapers, books, school supplies, breast milk, homes like for Habitat for Humanity, clothing. Um, and then, you know, then we have those that are focused on medical issues of, you know, cancer, ALS, Alzheimer's, heart issues, diabetes, dyslexia, it goes on, it just goes on and on. I'm sure I'm missing some, so I'm sorry if, if you support one of those. You already touched on the arts, but there's even legal aid support, assisting people with legal aid, you know, child and elderly caretaking services that can be provided, uh, parenting support, I mean, cultural education, athletic opportunities, you know? <laughs> so I, I feel like That's even true. if you don't have a lot of money, to, to contribute to a charity with this entire, this huge list of possibilities, just donating your time and energy or maybe a special talent that you have or if you're in business and you own your own business or, or in some type of a higher level management um, and you can see to providing either a, you know, support from financial support, well, I said not that, but your staff support, maybe taking a Saturday and all going out and doing a cleanup or working on a Habitat for Humanity build. I mean, I've done that before, and it's it's just so much fun. It's a real bonding experience. So, anyway. It's, it's very rewarding. It is. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's also um, the aspect of, like, the Honolulu Marathon, right? Um, I was a co-captain on one of the uh, aid stations, and that, that was school children. It was um, – uh, a number of community uh, individuals and resources came together to make that happen. There's all kinds of, uh, there's the, you know, there's the Heart Association, right? There's the uh, Cancer Society. There is um, uh, March of Dimes, and that's regarding uh, birth defects. Um, I could, I mean, the list is, is staggering, to be honest. And so there are plenty of opportunities uh, for each and every one of us to find something that it is that we may feel passionate about and are thinking of ways, how can I, how can I get involved? How can I give back to my community instead of, you know, looking to your public officials and saying, how come you aren't doing something? You know, well, how about you just say, wow, guess what? I can, I can find an organization that gets involved in my very own community. And now I can see the results of my efforts and the efforts of those uh, other individuals around me that, that feel the same way I do about giving back. Yeah, and, and I, I think there is a little spark that can hit um, all of us. And I'm really, really, truly hoping that as we have our various guests from the, the various nonprofit organizations, they can be very specific about the type of volunteers that they're looking for and the, the needs that they have. And they can, they can share that using this forum to share it with the community. And also talk about operationally what it takes. To, you know, you get a little bit more respect when you actually understand what it takes to 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 support, especially the larger long lar um, nonprofit organizations. So that'll be yeah, very you're, interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And so one of the things that I think is important, because nonprofits come and go, they do. And one of the more important elements of that, looking at it from a business standpoint, is sustainability. So you want to make sure that you're utilizing the resources efficiently and effectively. At the same time, you're just finding ways to make sure that you budget correctly and that you report back how you utilize the money so that the organization that gave you the money in the first place is mm -hmm. more likely to continue to do so. You know, I think we're going to have a break. Let me check with my lovely producers. Yes, we are. So we're going to take a break and we'll be back in just a little bit. Thank you so much.
I'm Stan Osterman, Stan the Energy Man, every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. If you're really interested in finding out what's going on in energy, especially here in Hawaii, but also all the way around the world, and especially if it has to do with hydrogen, look into Stan the Energy Man every Friday, 12 o'clock, Think Tech Hawaii. Be there. Aloha. Aloha. Welcome back. I am Krista Stadler here with Brandon Keenan, and we are on our first episode of Nonprofits Mean Business. And I wanted to talk a little bit um, to Brandon about the nonprofit that he's working with right now. Um, Brandon, would you like to share a little bit about that? I would. Thank you for asking. So the, the organization that I volunteer time with is called KYDO, or Kaimaki Youth Development Organization. And the mission of that uh, particular nonprofit is to give back to the underprivileged uh, children and families that live in the Palola Valley and in the housing. Uh, a lot of times uh, when uh, they come here from the Pacific Islands, they're, they're not really sure how to integrate with the community. And so one of the things that, that we like to do is we like to involve them in various activities. And one of those, of course, is uh, developing leadership programs for the young men and also developing uh, similar programs for the young women in that community. And then we also put together activities for them to get involved with that allow them to feel that sense of what it's like to give back. And so when you give back, you're not so focused on yourself. Mm -hmm. And once you start focusing outward into the community and you start to feel like you're a part of that fabric of the community, you have a sense of belonging and you have you also have a buy-in you have a commitment because instead of going out and tagging the building you just painted last week you know you wouldn't do that so and, you're so uh, i want to understand you're actually having these 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 children this this group of youth go out and work on other types of um needs for other nonprofit organizations is that right what we're well, what we're doing is we are kind of in, we're, we're we're teaching them what it feels like to give back to the community and how to become involved in 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 that sense. We've done a number of different things where we've done a lot of fundraising so that we can, uh, like last year, for a matter of fact, we actually took a, a group of young men. The, uh, we took the entire football team for Kaimaki actually to to uh, the mainland, and a lot of those boys have never wow. been on an airplane. Um, a lot of those boys don't have a vision, if you will, uh, beyond the island. They don't, they don't think they don't see themselves moving to the mainland or going to college or doing any of the things that a lot of people think of themselves doing uh, once they reach a certain stage in their life. And, and until you sort of start planting those seeds, it was like all of us when we all found ways to we either had mentors in our lives or we had you know, uh, sports coaches, or we had an English teacher, or we had somebody that inspired us to think beyond our own realm. And once we did and, and realized, gosh, there really is something else out there, uh, your level of creativity and your sense of self uh, starts to diminish and you start thinking more about your community and more globally. And uh, not just a community that you drive into, but one that you have worked on, you know, you've worked in the park, you've done all the various uh, development aspects and given back in such a way that you take on a sense of pride now mm -hmm. and you're like yeah you see somebody doing something you're like hey man i just painted that last week what are you doing yeah um instead of you know that sort of thing so giving them examples giving them um people to reach out to, to do you and, and do them. you ever have folks that have maybe been in their situation and have um seen the bigger picture and actually gone down that path, um, that's positive a, path. Yeah, that's a great To no, kind that's of bring them point. back and, and actually, show them, you know, I can relate to you type of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's, a, thank you for bringing that point up. And actually that, that is true. So we, we like to bring in people into the community that have gone beyond the community and have succeeded. So in this uh, scenario, we're talking about pro athletes, um, various uh, professionals in the community that have gone on to success. Maybe when they started out, they didn't really have a sense of what direction they were going to go in. But once somebody stepped in and took a personal interest in their life, 
uh, was able to see something beyond where they were. And those individuals are also looking for ways to get back to those communities that they came from. And uh, we bring those individuals in. David Tautofi is the director for KYDO, uh, quite an amazing uh, gentleman. He recently returned from the mainland. He uh, born and raised here, um, grew up in the Polo Valley and went off to play uh, football at UCLA, uh, ended up in Las Vegas working for a private school, doing some coaching and various things uh, there. And then he came back to the island uh, as a lot of people reached out to him uh, and asked him because you know, they felt that they needed him. And mm -hmm. sure enough, he came back and, and has made a dramatic impact in that community. And one of the things he's done uh, is for the boys is, is, is help them uh, develop a sense of pride and self and self-worth and uh, if, if, if I'd like to give you an example if that's sure acceptable. absolutely yeah yeah so I think everybody knows who Sama Paama is and if you don't you're certainly welcome to look him up but I can tell you this much um, if it hadn't been for David and the organization reaching out to this these, these young men and Sama Paama happened to be an exceptional example in this respect because he is one of the top defensive backs in the state last year. And um, that was not his trajectory when David met him. So David took a personal interest in this young man and uh, helped him with his, and he does amazing work, to be honest. I, I'm always amazed by the, the things he does. Uh, he cobbles all these boys together and he puts a football team together and, and they end up taking the OIA to state championship last year. Wow. Um, Sama was one of those examples, and he had every major college, uh, Alabama, USC, University of Washington, all wanting to give this young man a full-ride scholarship. And so he went from a young man in Palola Valley with too much time on his hands to being a top recruit to the state and ended up going to University of Washington with a full ride scholarship. So that's just one example of the kind of work that we do at Kimberly. Yeah, and boy, I, and he's I, a great example. And that's a fairly recent example, someone that the kids can all relate to. Yeah. Yes. And so we are planning on bringing Sama back, you know, in the interim and, and having him speak to the boys and uh, just providing some uh, leadership figure for, for the community. I think that's so amazing. Yeah. It, with, with, with David's um, organization, are there funds contributed by a foundation or the government, or is it all or is it all just by doing events and whatnot, or do you know? Well, thank you. Well, it's a variety of uh, contributions that come from all over. And so David and I have, have reached out to the community through various uh, connections that we have, that we've established and continue to establish. And, and as we pointed out uh, earlier in the show, these are individuals who you know, initially we reached out to our public officials in, the, in our district and we started talking to them about ideas that we had for doing various projects within the community and what our philosophy was behind it and why we were so passionate about it. And we needed some help. We needed so, a place to start. And so we started with our local representatives and Calvin Say, who I think a lot of people know who he is, was a great start. And he was very willing to introduce us to people who could provide the kinds of things that we needed so that we could provide these services. Uh, for an example, on the 15th of this month, we're gonna be doing a cleanup in the Parks and Recreation in Palola Valley. And we've gotten overwhelming response, not only in the form of volunteers, it's the largest project we've ever had. It's over 200 volunteers. And so we're going to be providing food. We're going to be providing, obviously, water and other things that were donated by very generous uh, businesses in the community. And we also are going to be, you know, I'm going to be manning a barbecue at some point and, you know, grilling hot dogs and hamburgers and handing out water and, and supervising various aspects of the project. Our ultimate goal is, is to make sure that the, there's evidence that we've been there and that the, the people who taken the opportunity to volunteer. And a lot of those people will come from Polo Valley uh, and our organization uh, will have a, a community park that they can feel proud of. It's a really that's nice so, park, actually. Oh, that's great. Just I'll needs have, a little help. I may have to come volunteer that day to keep me. Oh, you're certainly welcome. We'd love our, to have you. Yeah, get, get some of my, my crew from 
from the office to come and join me. They, the, the ones that love to volunteer. You know, I have a philosophy. My family kids me about it, but and it it, it, it comes up when you're bringing up this. You know, going out and asking the, the the council folks and whatnot. If you don't ask, you don't get. If you don't take one step forward to to ask for it or to reach out. Just like us with talking to Jay about the show, you know, whatever it is, um, if you don't take that first step, so many people are just afraid to take that first step and, and it just limits them. And sometimes you'll take one, two, three steps and you may think you're going one direction and it leads you to something else that could be even better. But again, if you don't ask or take those first steps, it can never happen. So anyway, just sharing a little bit of my thoughts on that, Brandon. <laughs> no, that's a that's a great point, and and that's exactly how we got started. And we got started because David and I met, and we had a discussion about what he wanted to do, and he was looking for some input and some help with that concept, and, and actually bringing it all together. And I told him I'd be more than happy to do whatever I could to help. Uh, my son actually is one of the coaches on the team, and he introduced me to David, uh, and David and I hit it off very famously. And then uh, I found out very quickly what his, where his heart was. And as it turns out, uh, it was very easy for my heart to follow. And once I got involved with the boys and started working with them and doing all these different activities with them, I got to tell you, I'm really, I'm, I'm proud to represent the organization, and I'm really um, thankful. Well, thank you. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. We hope we have inspired you in some way to find a way to give back to your own community by supporting a cause that you are passionate about. And we hope to see you in two weeks uh, at noon on Thursday for our next show. Thank you so much and mahalo.